And one thing we want to discuss when we're talking about acyanotic heart defects is Eisenmenger syndrome. And what's Eisenmenger syndrome? It's essentially a reversal of the shunt in which a left to right shunt becomes a right to left shunt. And uh, we'll discuss in a second how that happens, but basically it's the consequence of a long-standing and uncorrected left to right shunt. So any kind of larger ASD, BSD, or uh, patent ductus arteriosus could lead to Eisenmenger syndrome. And uh, let's discuss the physiology of how this happens, because this is really important to understand. Uh, we have an example of an atrial septal defect uh, on the right side here. And again, as you'll recall, we have blood flowing down the pressure gradient from the left atrium to the right atrium, uh, into the right ventricle, and then out through the pulmonary artery. And over time, uh, this increased amount of blood flow will lead to uh, increased pressures in the pulmonary artery, and eventually uh, these patients will develop a pulmonary hypertension. And in response to the pulmonary hypertension, this right ventricle is uh, pumping so hard against that pulmonary hypertension that it begins to hypertrophy uh, in response. And eventually the pulmonary hypertension uh, will become so bad that actually what we'll uh, begin to see happen is uh, the path of least resistance is no longer from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. It's now from the right ventricle back into the right atrium and into the left atrium, okay? So the pressure gradient now favors the flow of blood from the right ventricle into the right atrium rather than the, from the right atrium into the pulmonary artery. That's how you get Eisenmenger syndrome. And uh, as you can see now, we have a uh, right to left shunt rather than a left to right shunt. And again, what kind of patients are we gonna see this in? It's uh, in someone who's had a uncorrected uh, shunt. So generally this would be a child or a young adult uh, that may have had a known uh, heart defect or uh, was never diagnosed with one. And then uh, what kind of symptoms are they going to have? Again, now we're dealing with a right to left shunt, and that uh, would cause the patient to develop some cyanosis. Uh, again, they're having poor oxygenation of the blood as well, so they're going to have dyspnea. And again, in response to poor O2 saturation, you'll see some clubbing uh, in their digits as well. And again, these patients are going to be evaluated with the echocardiogram. And uh, on their labs, you might uh, see some uh, erythrocytosis. And the reason this happens is, again, you have poor O2 saturation uh, in the blood. But the difference here is that it starts to develop gradually uh, as Eisenmenger syndrome starts to develop. Uh, it's a slow process. So uh, the bone marrow will adapt by uh, increasing the production of red blood cells to try to uh, maintain uh, oxygenation of the peripheral tissues. And how do we treat these patients? Uh, again, they're going to have um, pulmonary hypertension that causes them to develop Eisenmenger syndrome as well. Uh, they're going to have some symptoms of right-sided congestive heart failure. So we can give them uh, you know, diuretics and uh, medications for pulmonary hypertension to manage these symptoms. But eventually, uh, Eisenmenger syndrome has a, quite a poor prognosis. So a heart transplant is going to be the you know, definitive treatment for most of these, most of these patients. And, uh, you know, they don't, generally don't have very good outcomes. So this is why it's so important to identify these uh, defects early. Uh, that's why we do a good physical exam on newborns, uh, do the appropriate workup. So if there is a, a defect present, we can catch it and prevent the onset of Eisenmenger syndrome.